MCG round 15. Carlton versus Melbourne. And Allen gets the first tap. Goes to Hopgood. Quickly swings it over his left shoulder. Into the attacking 50 already. And Mr. Reliable, Peter Dean, back there for Carlton. Dean's picked up uh, Uzo there. And uh, that'll be a good test for Uzo. Just a little bit too keen to go to the ball then, Uzo. And Dean read it a little bit better. Brought it towards the member's side and found Ratton. Ratton fainted the handball. Got past Newton. Went back. Switch play and gave it to Dean again. Two possessions in the opening minute for the veteran. Doesn't know what to do with it. Goes short to Hogg. Viney and Ratton will be a fantastic duel this day. Hogg's kick to Pierce in front. The kick was falling short. That was the place to be. Pierce moves it on quickly towards Silvani. Is he going to start up forward the way he did against the West Coast Eagles a couple of weeks ago? Yes, that was a very good lead by, by Stephen Silvani, and even a better pass. But uh, one interesting matchup as well. Woden picking up uh, Anthony Kudafizi in his 100th game. He actually led straight up the middle then, I think, Horse, and bent out on the end uh, run. That's right, it was a very intelligent lead. Free He's kick here. A free kick paid. And it's going to go to Seacamp, back from suspension for the Demons. Yeah, against Aaron Hamill there. Just pushed him out of the con contest before he got to it. Viney made position in the pocket. Interesting matchup midfield. Hopgood's gone to Craig Bradley, which uh, I would imagine be a tagging role. Brett Lovett to Seacamp, to McDonald, on the wing. Inboard to Obst. He goes towards centre half forward and Farmer through his fingers. McKay at the back to mop up. See the Carlton numbers back there. They got three players to one in that uh, effort there when the ball went over the back. Sean Charles tries to bend one around, didn't get it far enough, and it's out of bounds on the fall. A yeah, bit of pace there by Charles, but ran over the ball. I mean, that's, like I said earlier on, Charles and Farmer are crucial for this forward line, but they can't be looking for those guys as the leading players. They've got to be looking more as the crumbing players. As a forward playing against Carlton many occasions, you just find that you want to separate their backmen as much yep. as possible. So the flanker should almost start out on the boundary. You saw that when the ball went over the leading Farmer's head then. Uh, they just got numbers to it. They're great in support. Big fly from Murphy. Glenn Lovett at the back. Picked up by McDonald. Left foot kick. Drops in short. Mark taken by Hopgood 40 metres out. Well, Bradley was right. Got caught out there a little bit. Was back more in the pocket and hadn't picked up Hopgood, who really was playing probably the more dangerous position and Craig should have picked him up. It's almost a situation where Bradley might come out in this area and say, well, we're a much better team. I can do my own thing and not have to worry about my man as Hopgood comes in. That's not a, a bad looking kick, Ned. Yeah, straight through the middle. That's a great start for Melbourne. Like we said, if they can get off a little bit, the uh, last few weeks have struggled the first few kicks of goals, but uh, well done. That's a great start. It's almost like Bradley might come out on a day like today and it might take him 10 minutes if Melbourne puts, say, three or four on the board. Uh, he might say to himself, well, we're a much better team. We've won five more games than Melbourne this year and uh, I can afford to be the front runner and do all I want and I don't really have to be responsible for my man. And uh, if he lets him get away like that on a couple of occasions, it, it could hurt him. First half hasn't been the problem for Melbourne over the last few weeks. It's been the second half. Melbourne with the first goal. Neats. High kick to the wing. Good contest by Newton. Kudafidi's in after it. As we said, playing his 100th game. Sexton. Lovett did well with his body. Got to the front spot to Newton. Off to Pyman. Pyman up towards full forward. Schwartz in front. One for the Rovers. McKay. Farmer was clever. Uze wheels around. Snaps on his left foot. It's heading wide. Through for a behind, but well done by the Dees. Good pressure. Pyman was uh, probably might have been a better option there, giving a bit of time and space. He was out back towards the 50 metre area. To the wing, all Melbourne. So this is where Melbourne have got to capitalise. They're actually winning the game at the moment, albeit by only one goal one on the board, but they're actually winning the ball quite well in the centre of the ground. They've got to capitalise going forward. And yeah, they almost need Neeks back here, though, because David says Swarter's just perhaps That's not giving them enough. See, the height of. Uh, the height of Newton there drew that free from Sexton. He's probably not accustomed to playing on uh, people as tall as Newton Sexton and uh, just put the hand on the shoulder to get a bit of a leverage lift when he jumped then. Newton went short to Viney. Melbourne's efficiency rate excellent in the early stages. Eight and three quarter minutes gone. Short pass. Charles spilled off his chest. Schwartz barges his way through. Snaps from 40 metres. This will bring the house down. What a big fella. He's put it through. Yeah, I was, about to call, I was about to call, he's a good kick in that situation. We saw him in the Brisbane, 
Brisbane Lions game, swing onto the left foot. He loves that situation where he, he takes the big arc, and I don't think with his weight he's going to take too many sharp arcs now in, his, uh, in the continuation of his career, but he takes that big arc, and he rarely misses in that situation. Yeah, now, just what I was saying before is if they had Neeks down here as well, they'd give them two very tall, mobile guys up here, or not so much with Swarter, but uh, that was fantastic confidence by David. Guys, I, I don't know about you, but... Uh, Look, they've been competitive for two and a half quarters the last few weeks, Melbourne, but I just get the feeling their tackling is very, very good today, better than the last two and a half quarters efforts of the previous weeks. A better start even from the last few weeks, though, today. And uh, like you said, Demi, they've just got to hold it together for four quarters. Allen's tap went to Brett Lovett. His short kick found Sexton just near the centre circle. The last bounce, Bradley stayed back at the centre and waited to see which way the ball uh, swayed to, lent to on the bounce, and he runs full pelt to that side. Or oh, chance here for Kernahan at the back. The skipper snaps and snaps truly. That's a great kick. Yes, unfortunately for David, I think there wasn't, wasn't much talk for him then. David Neitz going back in the pack then, and the ball bounced, and uh, Stephen Kernahan stayed on the ground and read it perfectly. Carlton's last six appearances have read win-loss, win-loss, win-loss. Neitz has dropped back 100 metres off Kernahan there. To centre half forward by the skipper. Silvani at the back. Neitz fell over. Pierce. It was Ingerson who actually fell over. Got a hand to it. Seacamp coming out. Williams clever. Great hands to O'Sullivan. Brushes the tackle and kicks a goal. Yeah, very intelligent handball by Diesel. They just looked up and managed to see Rhino. And uh, Rhino was caught on his wrong foot but managed to slam it through all the same. So Carlton has its second and the gap back to just one point. And here it is in replay. Good gather by Williams here. He's really got his career going again, hasn't he, Rhino? Allen clears it, got it to Ratton. Umpire didn't need to pay a free kick. Ratton's kick went off the side of the boot. Sexton. Anstey has O'Sullivan running. Fights the handball. Got a good shepherd from Kernahan. O'Sullivan centres it to Silvani. That was very well done by Stephen Silvani then because uh, you see that uh, Luke O'Sullivan actually went to, to kick it one way, then went back the other way. Stephen Silvani was thrown out on the lead, actually had to actually committed himself to the first lead, then had to go back the other way when, when uh, O'Sullivan uh, did the balk and still managed to get in the right position for the kick. He's and hit his head again, hasn't he, Dermy? I think he might yeah, have landed he, on the ball. He got it pretty hard there. Oh. No, he gave it a bit of a tweak there. Anstey off in the meantime, and Camparelli, after receiving some instructions from the coach, comes back on to resume duties on the wing. He is a bit groggy. Yep, and what would you be thinking now? Ned, if you were the man on the mark, what would you be thinking after he kicks this? Uh, if he kicks it? Oh, I forget <laughs> the kick. What do you think you'd be going through your mind for the next passage of play with Silvani if standing I was going in to front play, of you? If I was going to be playing on Silvani and uh, he kicked this goal and be his second, which we're seeing now. So he's kicked it. Yeah, I'd really be playing, trying to play Stephen from in front rather than behind, perhaps where uh, Ingerson's getting caught a little bit. Yeah, when, the, when Carlton have brought the ball forward, they've actually had a fair bit of space. Yep. And as uh, Horse, you've made mention, Kernahan's pushing up to the wings as a centre-half forward. And we've got Pierce playing that secondary centre-half forward at home. Leaves an enormous amount of space for them to lead into. And uh, he's just got the option uh, of leading away from the uh, full forward zone and just really making up his mind whichever way he's going to spear the lead 45 degrees either way. It's a foot race. Uze. Murphy, couple of speedsters. Uze was tripped accidentally by Murphy. Umpire oh. said, well, holding him. Oh, geez, that was a bit... Not much in that. Well, he didn't hold him. See, Newton's on here. They've got to get in quickly. Yes, it's a mismatch with Bradley. Towards oh. Newton. Didn't make it. Charles at 30. Goals. Well, really, they should have uh, got that to, very quickly to Newton. It was a great effort by Bradley just to uh, spoil it forward and then... The, the, the really the style of play that Charles has to be trying to do all the time and rather than too much of a leading player was crumbling beautifully. Just watch this though, when he takes the ball, Mackay who is a very quick bloke for about 6-1 almost got to him uh, about three or four paces back but just the acceleration off the mark by Charles allowed him to kick the goal and he's happy with it. <laughs> he's <laughs> hold the boys too. <laughs> Melbourne's first quarter average this season, 16 points so they're well in excess of that already, out to 20. And they lead by two. Uze's loose down here if they get it. No. 
Uh, see that one there, the umpires call that Jimmy's first contact when he jumped up into uh, Allen, he had his hands in his stomach. He didn't really want to go for the ball. Yeah, fair call that one, I thought. Murphy's coming off. Sorry, Ned. Sexton at the back. Hickmott tries to barge his way through. Two on one here. Hamill did pretty well. Ball's bobbling around. Hickmott gets it off somehow to Anstey and he's going to kick an easy goal. Well, they just really pushed the ball forward. That it was well done by Hickmon in particular, who actually went for the first marking contest and uh, and then again did three or four contests, one after the other, and they just kept pushing and bullocking the ball forward to uh, eventually just score the goal. Melbourne have had more free kicks paid against them than any other team in the competition. 265. Well, could have Freedies had it and missed it, and Phoebe uh, might make him pay. Could have lead kick. by Farmer. Well, that was a great lead, and uh, Manton picked up on it. Schwartz went up the middle and Farmer went hard and quick to the right and then almost you see here Schwartz almost brought Matten back into play by sort of not realising where uh, Farmer was behind him and Matten almost cut it off but uh, too quick. That's only a positive error though Ned, they yep. just wants to run out the pill, we've got a great good shot kick. here and that's a good kick. Like that one Ned? I love it mate, I reckon, I'm not, I'm not barracking for the D's but I just love them, I've seen them so many weeks over the last few weeks, it's great to see them get off to a good start and these young kids who haven't had much to cheer about really starting to... Uh, get some momentum going. I tell you what, we try not to be unbiased and I think uh, Carlton are a very respectful club in my mind but just being in the rooms before the game has just left me with a little bit of an affinity with those boys out there in the uh, in the red and blue at the moment. And they're doing pretty well. There's Farmer's kick straight as a gun barrel on replay. 15 free kicks in this game already, not even at quarter time. Bit of tunnel ball from Sticks. All but one of them have been there I thought. Oh, bad luck there by Neitz. He had to get it out and it went straight to Pierce, who looks for Dean, who's floated up the ground. Ingerson at the back, Silvani. Onto his left. Little chip pass, Matthew Allen. Ingerson did superbly there, horse, but just to keep your feet. Yes. Allen Sil played on. Silvani is very good at keeping his feet, and that was very intelligent play, wheeling around on his wrong foot and being able to spot Matty Allen. And Pierce will now kick from just outside 40. Tell you, uh, horse. Uh, Pierce seems to be working extremely hard, more so than we've seen perhaps uh, earlier in this year when he's been injured so much, but working very hard up and down and across the ground. Yeah, he really is working very hard, and uh, as I said before, Kernahan seemed to be working up and then down into the spaces with uh, he seems, uh, him and uh, Kernahan are actually swapping roles. And, Ride this one in, horse. You've yeah, got a good view. Got a good view, and I think it looks pretty good from my point of view. It's a great kick by Pierce, and he certainly has been lively, Craig. He just, he's a very good athlete, Pierce, and as we know, he's pretty quick. And uh, he got stereotyped there for a little while, didn't he? Just playing at full forward. But uh, they're running him out to the half-forward line at the moment. Almost, I mean, the way league football's played at the moment, you cannot play one centre-half forward horse. You'd be a uh, testament to that when you've been up there. To play centre-half forward for the ball coming out of the back line and running to both wings is an impossibility. So you really need another bloke up there who's mobile, who can play centre-half forward back or to one side of the ground. Another interesting stat is this has been, on average, Carlton's worst quarter for the year, the second quarter. So mm. can the Demons capitalise on that? Kudafidis. Came off the wing then, Kudafidis, to the back of the bounce down. Left foot kick towards Hamill. Camparelli there to assist. Seacamp knocks well, him off the ball, but his hand pass missed the target. Did everything right then, Seacamp, except uh, get the handball away. Brett Lovett to a tight situation. Steins could only bring it around his body and landed about two centimetres inside the boundary. Yeah. Clean bowl, both Neeks and Phoebe. Oh, Kernahan left it behind. Unusual. Jimmy's hurt himself behind play, if Jimmy can hurt himself. Viney's kick was a high one. Newton was late on the scene. Dean had to wait underneath he it. He could get taken back for that. And he is. Yeah, I thought that was a little bit late. There was no legitimate effort to uh, spoil there. It was just a little bit of the old, I'll make him earn it. Could See cost the... him a goal. Watch See... here. See the runner. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, just <laughs> made him earn it. See the runners just come out to Craig Bradley, who's been picked up by Hopgood, and uh, Bradles had only had two possessions to date. So uh, it's uh, he's doing. It's interesting. I never seen. I never thought Hopgood was much of a tagger, but it's going to be a test for his uh, running ability to go with Craig Bradley for the whole day. As he's filled out, Hopgood, he's uh, lost a little bit of pace. He's still pretty quick, but he was a very, very quick younger player. Only kicked 32 goals in his career, Peter Dean. Not a bad kick, though. Make that 33. Well done, Danny, but uh, costly. We've seen Melbourne a couple of times, haven't we, Peter Donegan? Last few weeks, so Oof. he's fired up yet. <laughs> to the outer side, over the head of Sexton. He can run towards it and flip the hand pass over to Luke O'Sullivan. 
He'll come back on his left. No, he won't. Right foot kick. Hits Matthew Allen. Jimmy just struggling to stay with Allen. He rolled his ankle in front of the goal square there, and he's hobbling a little bit, but uh, just couldn't keep up with him. Time and off. Yeah, Sean Smith to the forward line to give us some more marking power. Oh. Allen to a vacant goal square. Silvani ran Ingerson out. It bounced on its point and bounced up into the post. The big yeah. leg break. A big Shane Warney. She spin right on her head, this ball, and uh, turned right angle straight into the post. Hopgood, was he interfered with? Umpire said yes. Took him a while to play it. Now they call play on advantage. Glenn Lovett running into the pocket. Bad Doesn't luck. deliver it well to Sean Smith, but he was good enough to recover and give it to Newton. Tries the banana the kick. Look at this one. That's close. <laughs> oh, that, was, that was great stuff by the big fella then. It was well done by Sean Smith also. The kick wasn't that flash. Picked it up in the half volley and managed to handball and went to a bloke who's probably oh, six foot six, I think Lee Newton is, and uh, in the old skull. And that was a fantastic check side punt for kick for goal. Yeah, he's actually showing a bit, isn't he? Ned, you'd like him. He's got a bit of vigour about him. He's willing to give out the odd cuff. Well, last week we saw a lot of it, and then Jimmy Steins went off to have a cut fix and, cut, and uh, basically did a heaps in the middle for them and uh, then got moved when Jimmy came back on. But he's, he's showing plenty. He was good when he uh, was on in the ruck last week too. He gave them real vigour and uh, yeah, he gives them something to think about too. The tiny town of Whitfield will be cheering after that goal and that could inspire the Demons. Let's see. Newton, a little kick off the ground. Who's a Charles onto it. Sean Smith, McDonald can steady and kick a goal. Well, that was Newton's sixth possession, that little uh, kick forward. And sometimes people say the kicks off the ground don't count, but just to keep the momentum going. And it's funny how that, whichever side takes the ball out of their side of the centre square first, normally kicks the goal from that from the ensuing passage of play, and that's what happened there. And Dermot, it doesn't have to look that pretty when you're pushing it forward. Look, as long as it's going your way, you can see the Melbourne players here. Newton just getting a little toe poke to keep the ball forward. And Sean Smith has actually, uh, since he's come on, has, hasn't got many kicks, but his handball and work off the ground has just been superb has resulted in two goals. Yeah, well spotted horse and the one thing Sean Smith has done against Peter Dean which Pyman couldn't uh, in uh, in the last few minutes, he's led him to the ball whereas Pyman, uh, not a natural forward, was being led to it by Dean. That's right. Centre bounce. There was a free kick, no doubt about that. Williams didn't have it. Melbourne fans don't like it but the Diesel will take it. Quick kick. Silvani bounced a foot in front of him. Camparelli. He too can steady, and he's a good kick. He's a oh. clinical finisher. He's a class player. I mean, they really did miss him earlier on in the year when he was out with glandular fever. And, uh, you know, it's, it's unusual for a player to come back with glandular fever and really feel 100%. But he certainly made his mark in the last few weeks. And, uh, gee, he finishes well. What are you doubting he had it, Ned? No, no, I just mean that once they get it, they, they tend to, it takes you a good 12 months to get over glandular fever, mate. Yeah, oh, I know, I was just I having know. a go at you. I know, well, I, I, we've missed you that many times the last few weeks, so I'm not sure how to take <laughs> anymore. <laughs> it is great, though, when you do get the midfield players, when you can get a winger who will run 120 metres on one passage just to uh, be a receiver going past the passage of play, it's just a huge benefit to your side. Good having Dermot up in the commentary box, Ned. There are still some sandwiches left on the plate. <laughs> <laughs> Allen's... Tap was taken by Wo Woden. Quickly got it away. Now here's Farmer. Another goal. Yes, sir. What a game of footy. Actually, that was very intelligent play by Farmer. You can see the two Carlton players, if we uh, watch the replay here in a minute, the two Carlton players actually both went up the spoil. Farmer stayed down, and therefore he was by himself at the uh, punch down and enabled him to have an easy shot for goal. You can just see the two Carlton players going up. Farmer stayed down, and he had a pretty easy shot for goal. Yeah, he actually let his man Hoggy run away from him to the contest, didn't he? He just kept his feet, and that's what he's there for. Exactly right. He's there to get those crumbs. He only has to lead and take the mark when no other option is available. But there was the big man run right down the spine, and that's just the plan with Hutchie. The big men down the spine kick it to him, and those guys feed off them. Four goals in three minutes here. Ratton lost possession. Williams, lightning handball to Camparelli. The Blues come forward again. Neek's going back. Oh, she nearly took a ripper. Anstey's going to kick another goal. Certainly has. He swung it back in and uh, Neek's going back into the contest then. Don't know about that one. Might have been better just to sit down and wait for the crumb. And uh, what, what happened afterwards is both, all three Melbourne players ended up on the ground and the uh, Carlton players kept their feet there. Yeah, well, it's good. He's, he's making an effort. I suppose it's a positive error if you look at yep. it. He's out of form. He's making the positive error to try and win the ball. But as you say, look, if uh, he had the Carlton jumper on then, you'd run up to him and say, well done, you split the pack open. 
lead here has changed four times in four minutes. What a game of footy at the MCG. Settle back and enjoy it on Sports AFL. Jimmy Steins will enjoy that ruck contest because he finished up getting the free against Allen. Weighs up his options. Straight down the centre where the big men are. And that's what he does. Schwartz. Well done. Got rid of Manton with the big body. Yeah, just David's strength then. Just actually just lent on uh, Glenn Manton. Let him bump off him, didn't he? Yeah, it was very well done. One kick. And he's put it to good usage. He rang me the other day and he was very disappointed the number of possessions he's getting. And I said, man, all you need to do is kick two or three goals a game and you've basically done your job. He, all he has to do now, I think, is tighten up on the defensive side of things. Big run up this one, Horse, for a shot at goal. Do you think that uh, can make you a little bit in balance when you actually kick? It can, although some players are actually better off kicking on the run. He certainly, certainly hasn't done him any harm. <laughs> no one's capable of missing here. How good is this game? This is, uh, well, it's a game between 12th and 16th, 12th have won two games, 16th have won, uh, let, just let me, sorry, 14th have won up uh, to seven games. I'll get this right. Carlton are in 12th, <laughs> they've won seven back, games. <laughs> and Melbourne, 16th, they've won two games. This is one of the best games I've seen for about a month, I reckon. Hit the nail on the head before, Ned, I think, by saying that uh, David Swartz just has to kick his two or three a week. Now, will Carlton reply in kind? Just been seesawing. Brett Lovett went to take it. Williams wrapped him up. Sexton tackled by McDonald. Newton picked his pocket to Phoebe. Phoebe with a chip kick. Sean Smith caught behind. He's going back now. So is Schwartz. So is Murphy. Forces it behind and stops the run. Well, if you're Greg Williams on the opposite side, you'd throw your hands up to say, yeah, I kicked that. That's my goal. <laughs> That's how we milked one a couple of years ago. Williams wrapped up by Schwartz. And didn't he love doing that? Ratten. Sexton, not a good kick. Not on Jimmy. Holding the man. Play on. Brett Lover. Sean Smith. Yes, you've got to be very careful with those. Bringing the ball in too early across the uh, centre line there. And uh, I mean, that's just the last thing the fullback wants is space up the ground, which Sean Smith had plenty of then to lead into. Yeah, good point. That all the McCarlton players, they thought we won easy possession in. They went for the run to be uh, link players, opened it up. That should have been 50 metres then. Ratton walked in front of Sean Smith, and Sean Smith pointed it out to the umpire, and I don't think he was watching. Might have been uh, thinking, well, you can make me get a bit pedantic if you want. I'm not going to, too. Will it come back? Not enough. Second attempt, ball on the deck. Ingerson to Glenn Lover. Seventh possession for Ingerson. He's been very good back there. Oh, Caparelli needed to keep his feet. He slipped over, allowed McDonald to run through. Charles. Oh, good hands. You just don't think Sean Charles is going to hold those ones over his head like that, but uh, that really stuck there, and it was a big... It takes a bit of courage to jump like that sometimes. You get your legs taken from under you. He was just about to give the umpire a huge bake for not playing in the mark, <laughs> and he said, but I did. Hopgood. That's a good lead, that. Sean Smith hits him on the chest at 45. Yes, they really used the angles of the zone then, of the uh, zone, the, the goal zone in front of the, front of the uh, square. Sean Smith actually led right across really wide, and that's actually not a bad place to, to lead. This for his second goal of the season. Got the legs. Yes, I think that was a pretty good kick by Smithy. Smithy's actually got a natural draw to his kicking style. You can see him run out to the right a little bit and draw it back. He was like that when he was at North Melbourne and uh, had a slight little hook towards the end of his kick and that was uh, just drawn back very nicely. They're doing well. Phoebe to Steins. Look out, Jimmy. Viney, Glenn Lovett linking up in the midfield. Bangs it in towards the forward line. Three on one. Murphy dropped what he should have taken. There's a bit of panic here. Farmer kicks it over his head and kicks it behind. Yes, Murphy had a chance to mark that, but uh, I think there was possibly, again, one more handball than what Melbourne needed then. Can Carlton rebound it? Bradley, Hickmott and Murphy combined. Allen. That could really hurt you, a turnover like that. Full control, no pressure, and you give it up. They're playing smarter, Melbourne, now. They're just dropping back into the gaps with Silvani. Gave the hand pass off to Murphy. Silvani and Ingerson again. Silvani one-handed, brilliant. That, that's oh. careful. <laughs> careful, Sauce. I mean, like I said, that's the way that it's, it's a better way to kick it a Sauce. You wouldn't normally do it most full forwards, but look at that strength there, just bang. That's fantastic. 
Just sensed uh, he needed this one because he's getting a little bit frustrated down there. Here, Ingerson, see how he's lost his right foot off the deck there? Yep. Yeah, pushing off one leg, you'll never beat Steve Silvani. It's hard enough with two on the deck. 60% and he's had five possession, three marks. So his uh, kick this would be good because I thought he's probably struggled this quarter and uh, Ingerson's certainly been on top. This for his second to cut the lead to three points. No problems. Pierce coming up to the, him there. Pierce is now playing back in the goal square. He's had uh, eight possessions, Pierce, and uh, there's Steve's uh, goals, two set shots. Well, le legitimately, I mean, the score is 12 points opposite the way it should have been with Uzo's turnover in the ground, in the middle of the ground there. He had Smith running about 50 metres away, who'd done his opponent, beaten him with uh, positional moving, and should have taken the ball about 45 metres from goal. Bad kick, cost them dearly. Should be plenty of time on in this quarter. We've played 25 minutes, five goals on the run, four from set shots for the Blues. Bradley gets it out of the middle. Kernahan in front, sticks his bottom into Neats. Glenn Lovett, Brett Lovett, look out. Well, done. well he brushed Camparelli off like he was a mozzie. Well, he's, he's only a fine-boned young man, Camparelli. Murphy goes back. Oh, here's a chance for McDonald if he can get around Murphy. Gives it to Newton, lines up from 30. Kicks the goal. He's in good nick, horse, big Newton. Second goal for Lee Newton. He's just following the passage of play at the moment. So he's just, he's doing very well. He's at centre half forward. He's just giving a bit of movement, a bit of vigour. We see Schwartzy go up there and watch Newton come into the scene eventually. McDonald, he's just getting, see, he's just come out of the, he's on the same line of play that they come. He's just getting to the fall of the ball. And he's creating Sexton a few worries at the moment. Kernahan coming up the ground on the wing. Hickmock's on. Give it back, he said. 30 free kicks already in this game. Oh, well, he gave it back to him the second time. Oh, Ratton's moving into space. Yeah, it was... Well, That's called, called play. Uh, like everyone just said, all the Melbourne guys have just stopped. They just didn't want to fill up the gaps at all. Well, the, the Melbourne Blacks... on here as well. The Melbourne Blacks followed their opponents uh, out wide, and then he just came in behind Ratton. Well... There can't be too much doubt about that one. You don't agree, Ned? Well, I, I, as, I, as I just glanced down, I thought Soss actually swung him around. Ingo or Ingerson around, but uh, we'll have a look at the replay if it comes up here. And uh, might be a fair call. Well, this legitimately for a league footballer is a point-blank range. And that's what happens. Another goal to Steve Silvani. His third for the quarter as we approach the 30-minute mark. Carlton creep back to within three points. Viney oh, just turns around, brushes them off. So important for Melbourne. Phoebe looks towards the flank. Schwartz in front. Yeah, he just worked Manton away from the fall of the ball there. 30 and a half minutes ticking over. He goes into the pocket. Now, that siren had gone by the time the mark was taken. The umpire said he's going to pay the mark. Well, the only thing that I can think of there is that the siren comes from up here near us, and by the time it's uh, reached downstairs where Chris Mitchell had control of play, the mark had been taken. And he is a pretty good kick on the left here. He'd have to be a great kick, damn it, from there, I think. Yeah, a kick from about 51, 52. If he hits it to the outside, the further side of the goal line, uh, it's going to have to carry about 60 metres on the drop pump. But if he sneaks it in on the near goal post he should make the distance will they go in punching the air if he gets this no pulls it and through for a behind but a great quarter and the melbourne members appreciate the efforts of the d's their four point leaders over carlton at half time it has been a most entertaining game of football 10-7 plays 10-3 at the long end we're all set for a fantastic second half if it continues on the way of the first half melbourne leads by four points Bradley first hands to the ball, gives a quick hand pass to Ratton. He bangs it into the 50. Silvani led Ingerson out. Seacamp, Ingerson, not a good handball. Silvani paddles it in. McDonald didn't know what to do. He was caught and he's gone. No, umpire said he couldn't get rid of it. Yes, McDonald actually going back into play then would have been better off perhaps heading towards the boundary line. Kudafidis to take it. Playing in his 100th game today. He's played every game this year. 
He's been having a bit of a trough. Murphy, good juggling, Mark. You can see Jimmy Stein's actually dropping back into the hole in front of goals there and therefore forcing Murphy to lead towards the boundary line. Allen made the run down. Stein's got back to cover him, so Murphy will kick from around 45. Got a good view of it from there, horse. It's not a very difficult pocket to kick goals from, though. No, you can bring it around, especially if you're a right footer. Just to give Carlton the lead. It's a very good kick. Yes, as, as you said, Dermot, it, it, uh, if you're actually going to have a shot if, if you're a right footer, you'd rather have it from there because the, actual, act, the uh, natural draw of the ball brings it around and uh, swings the ball in towards goals. Viney has space. Two bounces. Runs to the wing. Kicks towards Schwartz going back. Charles! What a mark! His hands have been fantastic today. He's taken two contested grabs like that. And uh, they've been sensational. They've been the best overhead marking I've seen Sean Charles commit himself to. It was a great grab. And uh, as he Schwartz calling the ball to kick the ball long and on top of his head. And uh, Farmer read it well in the uh, second man up and uh, took a lovely grab. The distance will test him, Ned. Certainly will. That's his third mark for the day. This to get the lead back for the D's. Kicks from 49. It's great Not kick. It was funny then, the way he ran in, he sort of went one way and then came back inside the other way just to get a little bit more distance, sort of hooked the ball a bit and uh, it was a lovely kick. It's almost a side step to the left so he could get a bit of a hook foot back onto the line of it that the umpire had put him on. It's almost like the rugby style when they start to kick out. Just, just at half time I went to the toilet and the Carlton supporters said, oh, if we lose to this mob we're going to have to sack the coach. So uh, they started <laughs> already. <laughs> Yeah, good kick, good grab. Now, that was well deserved by Sean Charles there. McKay to the outer side. Allen comes across. Oh, dropped it. Pierce luckily was there to get the crumbs. Gave it to Hickmott, who's got a lot of space in the centre square. He can run in and shoot for goal if he wants to. Pops it up to the top of the square. Silvani flies high. The D's defence are going to clear it, though. Neat's great kick to Brett Lovett. He's got Uze on long if he wants him. Glenn Lovett didn't get a kind bounce. Had to wait for it. Gets it to Uze. Kernahan forced to come down the ground. Uze chips to Newton. Oh, oh crunch. Oh. Allen ran straight at him. Advantage paid. Melbourne move it onto the forward line. And Smith comes out and takes the mark. And we'll keep an eye on Newton. He's hurt. He hasn't moved. No, he's, he's, he's not getting moved. Up now. He's just starting to move a bit. He's uh, got on the head, though. And... and uh, Jeez, it was a hard hit. Good, well done, mate. Just got up and... Good uh, boy. That's what it's about. That's a good hit. Oof. Now, that is... Now, look, I, I, I love seeing guys have a go, but he made no effort for the ball there, and he's just put that bloke in his sights and thought, that's a pretty weak thing to do in my mind. Sean Smith, can he make them pay? Well done, and Newton's got up, and uh, they've all gone over to him and got him going, because... Uh, you don't understand, unless you're out there, you've been out there, and a guy, one of your teammates goes down and he's been hit hard. And I reckon he's up. been reported. I reckon he's reported him. I reckon yeah, Steve McBurney has gone over to him. He's made no effort for the ball there, and he's cannoned into a bloke who's got eyes for the ball. And legitimately, as you can see there, Alan not once has seen the ball, known where it is. His focus there was to knock that bloke out. And I reckon that's a, a little bit of an ordinary act, that one. Ratten. Somehow found a passage through there. Kicks to Kernahan. Just couldn't grab it. Neats able to square it to Phoebe, who's got plenty of space, and he can run. Well, that's a fantastic sign for Melbourne at the moment. This is about, it's an 11 and a half minute mark. At this time, the last few weeks, Melbourne have dropped away. But they've just really had a go at the moment at this time. Schwartz to Charles in the pocket. Centres it towards Farmer. He's taken marked the mark. It. He's marked it. He's going to test him. Great work by uh, Sean Smith then. He ran, he couldn't get to the contest. Manton filled up the gap and he went and just spoiled the ball. Schwartz is working very, very hard. And uh, Sean Smith's hurt the side of his ear and he's holding his ear, but he's uh, he just made a great contest. This will test him. Check side punt. I've got right on it. He's run around a bit and he's hit, hit the post. post. Well, just, if you had to pick somebody in Melbourne, Ned, to have that kick, you'd go for Farmer. Yeah, I, I would. It's just interesting, Farmer and Charles, they've just got to understand each other a little bit better because a couple of times they've actually run to each other's space and they've just got to be aware of each other, where each other are. Sea camp at the front. Brett Lovett to Glenn Lovett. Just threw it onto his left foot. Now it's a race. Pierce will turn around onto his left. Handball to himself. Squared it to Anstey right on the 50. 
He'll move it on. Kudafidis. He just opened up for Kuda there. So looking for his first goal in his 100th game. David Parkin anxious to get him out of the trough. He's not a good set shot either, Kuda. But that one looks good enough. Carlton gets the 12th goal and trails now by four points. That was good play by Pierce too. He's just a little bit slippery for his opponent then and uh, managed to get a couple of yards and a very intelligent short pass. Oh. Brett Lovett made a contest of it. There's a free kick here. And 50 metres. Actually, it looked to me as though the, the free kick wasn't actually paid and he had a bit of a think about it, the umpire, and uh, had a think about it for a couple of seconds and decided that the free kick was there. Looks like Pierce is a bit sore behind play, John. Yeah, I think Pierce, he just uh, went to spoil that ball and uh, might have caught the little corky, I think. There's a good professional football aspect on that by Lovett, wasn't he? He just knew he was going to get to uh, make the hard contact, but just kept the head up. Schwartz. Oh, uh, good. Oh. Hopgood snaps from 30 metres and kicks a ripper. That's a great oh, goal. Hoppy. There's the boy who runs emus and works for the CSIRO. <laughs> well, that's his seventh possession, eighth possession, actually, and Bradley's had ten. He's kicked a goal, so he's very much on top of Bradley at the moment. But I was about David Schwartz had a, a great bit of body work again. Then he, again, the, the guys upfield have worked out that he's not running that well. Look at this, just bang. He should have really held that, Mark, but uh, just great to see him, the guys upfield realising where they have to kick to him. Once again, the professionalism of Lovett on the kick after getting the free kick. He's, he's kicked that one about 60% in terms of hardness and just making sure it weighted to the, uh, to the contest there of Schwartz and just fell on his head. Melbourne back to a nine-point lead. Steins, Woe Woden, tucked it under his arm, turned around and got a quick kick away. Awkward bounce favours Stephen Phoebe. He kicks from 45 metres. Is it another one? Yes, it is! I won't start singing this song, guys, but I know, I know it off by heart from a Norwood day, so if they do win today, I'll get up and sing it for you. It was well worked there. I mean, uh, the, the Melbourne player there, I'll pick him up on the replay, just worked uh, Hickmont away from the ball there. Knew he was never going to receive it. You see it come up here. Uzo, the kick please. here. Kick here, and he just works him under here. Oh, yeah, it's Uzo. See, he just keeps the body there, keeps him away from the fall of the ball or lap, because he knew that uh, Phoebe was coming through. A clear passage there, and as we say, sometimes you don't actually have to get a statistic against your name in terms of handball mark kick to actually be the major contributor in a goal scored. Diulio inboard to Kernahan on his left foot. Bradley went through his hands. Well done, Seacamp. Just gets it and bangs it out towards the outer side. I oh. thought that was a free kick to uh, Sticks then. Neats. Set is it. Kuda Fides, great mark. Towards the members' side. Camparelli. Brett Lovett in pursuit. Camparelli in short. Kuda uh, Pierce beaten for it by Obst. Charles in the front spot. Free kick, says the umpire. Now he calls play on. Went back to Charles. Wobbly kick, but it falls straight onto the chest of David Schwartz. Well, <laughs> he tried for the talk. What happened to Deeney then? Did he think it was going to go another 15 further? Well, no, he, he actually, Farmer went for the talk. Uh, sorry, Charles went for the talk, but no, I think Deeney just thought he was going to do a drop putt. And, uh, oh, look, he bowed the head. He, he knew then and there that uh, no, no, the old head went down. That's why the set play came in, didn't it? Just that uh, chip up of about a 35-metre drop punt uh, horse making everybody think it's going to go long. The forwards read it a little bit quicker and mark it on the chest. Yeah, I think we commented on that uh, last week, Then It's very important just to t kick to the top of the square. To make the gap 21 points, and he does. Well, this will be interesting to see now with the Melbourne boys with a real belief, 21 points the difference, with a real belief that they can win this game and get a belief in themselves. Are they a good enough player? Do they individually have strengths that are better than their opposition players? It'll be good to see just if they can continue on now and carry this on. Well, they've won 50% uh, of their matches when they've been leading at half time, so you'd have to say uh, they're certainly going to go on with it. 
Very important this last uh, in time on here that uh, Melbourne don't let Carlton score. It doesn't matter if they score or not, just as long as Carlton don't. Stein's all alone to Glenn Lovett. Well done, Williams, Williams sweating on him. O'Sullivan to Dean to Anstey to O'Sullivan to Williams. Brushes the tackle. McKay. Wobbly kick. Kudafidis. One hand. Fell over. The Ds can bring it out of defence and do. They'll be looking for the boundary. They want it to go out. Hickmott charging after it. Gets there. Good chase by Sean Smith. Got there late. Now a chance to, for Melbourne to bang it back in. Who's McDonald. Manton didn't have eyes for the footy. Uze did well in the end. Love He's it. got a man on Glenn Lovett. He's all alone. He can mark and play on. He will. And the Ds get another one. And he is nailed after his kick that. You'll get another kick if it's not a goal. It's a goal. Just a hard decision to make there, isn't he? He saw he had a bit of space and he, he knew if he was going to take the mark and go back and kick it. He was on a huge angle, but uh, took the player on and got hit after the ball, but put it through. It's a great effort. And, uh, uh, Ned, I always found if you can't get courage when there's a goal at the <laughs> end of the prize, you'll never get it. <laughs> Stephen Kernan's actually been moved down to the goal square alongside Stephen Silvani with Lance Whitnell being placed at centre half forward. Big forward line, isn't it, John? It certainly is. There's not many crummers around. And Dermot, exactly. we mentioned at the start of the quarter about that three goal fact for Carlton. They've only kicked two goals in this quarter. Ball bounces for Hopgood. His hand pass was a good one to Newton. Woe Woden off his favoured left foot. Not a great kick. Manton dropped the mark. They're besieged Carlton defenders at the moment. They're working it around. They're having three or four di uh, disposals inside their defensive 50 each time they get the play of the ball. Dean switches play. Kudafidis, mark or free kick. Clarkson actually was caught out on Kudafidis and, and uh, I mean, it was a huge height difference there. It goes short to O'Sullivan. Little dinky kick. Off the left, he passes to Hickmott, who's all alone at 50. Plays on, runs to 40. Can Carlton get one back? Yes, they can. Yes, that was a good goal by Hickmont. I actually thought it was going to miss from my point of view, but it just swung around the last minute and snuck through for a goal. But uh, there was two players all alone there in that hut, in that uh, forward pocket, and uh, it was just a matter of the ball getting down there quick enough before they were manned up. 66% of their matches they've won when leading at three-quarter time. Not a bad stat when you're 21 points ahead at the final bounce. Whitnell's on for Carlton. Williams takes the tap. Woe Woden dives on top of it. Viney shoots it out. Williams, was he held without it? He's telling the umpire he was. He's got to give him an absolute earful here. Steins. Free kick oh, plucked out. I think they're squaring up here. Well, oh, he's good at Diesel. Diesel oh. didn't talk the umpire into that one, did he, Ned? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good kick. That is a great kick. Oh. Silvani was carried forward. Umpire said he was taken high. We can't do anything there, can you, Jeremy? I mean, Ingerson's got to go for the sprawl. If he does that, he's going to push him in the back. If not, he's going to mark it. We've seen it twice today, haven't we? Well, look, the, the target zone, and Johnny, you playing a lot more footy than Ned and I at uh, full forward. When they kick the ball and it's going to hit you in the kneecap, that's the ideal spot for the full forward. I mean, it just leaves no room for the uh, full back to punch it away. Yeah, he really had no choice then, Ingo, but to, to try and make a, a good spoil. He's kicked that one against Silvani. That's his fourth. He's been good value, Silvani, after Ingerson was on top of him early. Oh, after the initial first goal that Silvani kicked, Ingerson was on top of him up until halfway through the second quarter, but he's been good value since. Peter Dean actually running off David Swartz now, and uh, it's a bit of a battle of the wills. And he's, he hasn't gone with him. That's it's so dangerous. Look where Peter is now at the moment. He's right in the middle of the ground. Yet if Melbourne win it, Swartz is by himself. And, oh, that's and what's they do. Happen. Go short. Yep. Dean and then go long. By Woden to Schwartz, who marks at 40. Now, Newt Newton has to run in here, and they outnumber them. Uh, he's taking too long. Uze's run for him. Schwartz has he's a shot it. at the goals. Oh, that makes them pay. Well, that was uh, very interesting then. I mean, Peter Dean ran off David Schwartz and actually backed himself in. As I called it, it was a bit of a battle of the wills. Who was going to give in? Schwartz decided to stay. And uh, fortunately for Melbourne, Melbourne won it on the boundary throw-in. And uh, Schwartz was by himself with Peter Dean up in the Carlton forward line. Yeah, he's not really willing to run over and just body language say that isn't going to happen again, Dean. He's just wandering around and the runner's out to him already.
The runners out to win straight away. It's a funny game though, Dermot, isn't it? I mean, Ooh. if Carlton had won that one and uh, Deening would have kicked the goal and made Swartz look bad. Phoebe's on out wide. All by himself. He's 40 metres in the clear, Stephen Phoebe. He just lost uh, Camp Reale in the traffic in the middle of the ground and he had no idea where he was. Good lead, good kick. Schwartz nearly had enough of it to claim it. Sexton had it a long time. Oh, Schwartz good body work by Schwartz. Terrific body work by the big man. Hopgood. Phoebe. Steady's at 50. Chips it short to Charles. Yes, that all. I think that uh, David was obviously very disappointed at dropping that mark. It was certainly a very good kick to him. He certainly uh, responded very well to that by getting up and laying a bit of uh, a shepherd on an account and opponent, creating space, which is what he's designed for in that forward line. Well, panic stations for Carlton Murphy. He's getting set to come on. Pierce is just about to come off, and they just they've gone on and off three times before they finally made the move. They don't know what they're doing. He's hobbling a bit. Pierce looks like he's uh, either his chronic knee still sore as he kicked. Them. No, it's a point. To the near side, yeah, and Cambriali for letting Phoebe get lost, uh, lost him in the traffic. He's been taken off as well, and Anstey going back on. Yeah, David Swartz was on by himself in the middle of the ground then, and then unfortunately took a little bit too much time to get it on. Good decision there, though. If it had got turned over, it was right in the corridor, though, yeah. for Carlton to take it back. Glenn Lovett pinched a couple of extra metres. Hopgood pounces on it. McDonald can run down. If they now, kick what... this, they will run all the way home and run all over Carlton. Got a terrible bounce, but he had the presence of mind to give it to Brett Lovett. Kicks from 48 metres. It's home. Good. And so might the Demons be. Yeah, a good kick from Brett Lovett there. Had a Jimmy Steins on short, uh, but backed himself in. It was a very good kick. Well, this will be a true indication of just how good these kids uh, can be from Melbourne. They've just been kicked in the butt, so to speak, from pillar to post for the whole year. And this will just uh, show us that uh, with a bit of confidence and a belief that they can win a game, suddenly their backline players will start running. We saw three players come down in a wave then. Obst was at the back, Phoebe, uh, McDonald, and it just shows you that with a bit of confidence, these boys can win a or pinch a few more games this year. Ratton wants to play it on and does. Backwards to Manton. Manton towards Kernahan. Neats nudged him out and took the mark. Yeah, that's the Paul Roos special, that one. Your arm, when it's going up to mark the ball, accidentally nudges the player in front under the ball and out of the way. That's a very dangerous spot to kick it, Dermot, I think, oh. across the goals, isn't it? Oh, you'd be holding your head in your hands if you were Hutchison at the moment, wouldn't you, coach? Chance for Carlton McKay to Williams. Brett Lovett makes it difficult. Williams off the left foot, misses to the left. It's been fascinating. I've just really focused on Greg Williams for the last two or three minutes, and he ran over to the other side of the ground. He's just been, he watches the ball so carefully and just trying to sum up where it's going to go, and he puts himself in a magnificent position every time. To, to just get the stats, to get the kicks and the handballs. Well, there's still time for Carlton if they're good enough. They've got a tough run home. Oh, he's put it out of bounds. Steve Silvani was on there just to sort kick inside, and uh, he didn't want to know about it, Diesel. I reckon he just rubbed the ball on the ground there because he loves those people hanging over the fence just abusing him. He's a very good uh, kick, Diesel Williams. He might just give himself a bit of an angle here. Bad kick. Kudafidis. It's He's a sharp angle, angle. Unless, unless Cuda dishes off here. Hickmott made position. Yep, I always thought Cuda would dish off then because he is not a good set shot directly in front. That well, guy the required distance, Ned, did it? Well, just. I mean, I think that's what the big Irishman's having a bit of a say about. And uh, so it's it. Can they keep their hopes alive? Hickmott, oh, he's oh, missed it. terrible. He's, he's a very good kick as a rule, Hickmott, so that's a real indication of that's the way a, Carlton are going. That's a netter kick, that one. That's a shocker. <laughs> Hogg, 60 metres out, too far for him. Silvani. Kicked it high, didn't give Silvani much of a chance, gave Ingerson a good chance to spoil. Glenn Love it out to McDonald. Spreads it wide to Obst. Be careful. Clarkson, kick smothered. McDonald has to run. Hog, good effort. Toe poke to Kernahan. To Murphy. Beaks three players. Off a step from 40 metres. And that bounces straight up in the air over the goal umpire's head through for a behind. Well, Dermy, they've really... I mean, we saw the numbers weighted over towards your side when they got their first kick in after the point. They should have just kicked out long there and perhaps even forced over the boundary. Yeah, really, yeah. they're just stuffing around with the ball at the moment. Uzo goes short. Oh, gee. Gergic. Anstey put the pressure on him. He's just got to get the Schwartz to come down now and just bomb it right on his head. Oh, oh. telegraph. Well, you're right, Ned. They're messing around with their possessions here and they don't want to give Carlton a sniff, Melbourne. Williams 
to Hogg. He can run. He'll run away. Takes a bounce. Runs to 45 metres. Not a good kick. Silvani marks it, though. You were mentioning earlier on, Devon, about those uh, short kicks inside going towards, bringing the ball in too early, and that was a good example of it. It can be a two-goal turnaround. It's a goal you miss out on, a goal that the opposition side gets. Look, uh, there wouldn't be a team that is placed in the uh, top four sides that would not have definitely scored a goal from that uh, passage forward that Melbourne had then. Silvani to keep the Blues' hopes alive, and he lets Ingerson know all about it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Soss has, uh, Soss has got one, like I said, around the head a little bit early, early and he's very happy to show Ingerson what, it, uh, what happens. Kicks a goal and it's an ugly looking kick here from Hogg. You see him running down the midfield here and uh, probably just not balancing and then it, just floating forward and Steve's picking up very quickly and uh, let him know about it. Had yeah, a few words to say then. Just the quicker to turn around and watch which direction the ball was coming in from. Yeah, good play. Five goals to Soss. If Carlton gets the next one, the game is back alight. We're at the 20-minute mark of the last quarter. The difference, as you can see, is 18 points. Sports AFL's live coverage from the MCG. Melbourne go forward through Hopgood to the pocket. And Gergic. can a young fellow make amends for his mistake before? Yes, Gergic just uh, caught his opponent's sex, and I think he mentioned it before, Dermot, about uh, perhaps being a little bit of a mismatch. He's pretty quick, Gergic, on the lead, and uh, Sexton was left a little bit flat-footed. He went forward a few weeks ago and uh, did quite well. Yeah, he took one. He? Yeah, he kicked the last goal they kicked last week before they fell in a hole and uh, after a good lead as a full forward. Kick goes to the left. Oh, oh, there's a mark. Schwartz has taken it. That was a great mark by Schwartz. I thought he was right out of that contest. Well, really, Peter Dean's the only other big man down there and uh, all the other guys for Carlton are small men. We look at him, Manton's just coming into screen now. He wasn't in the contest. Peter Dean's the only other big man and, and Peter Dean, as we say, he has a lion heart. He's a fantastic uh, con contributor. He just always has a go, but legitimately, he's like a, uh, a pumped-up flanker. He's about a six, one and a half. He'd probably be giving away about 15 kilos to David Swartz too, wouldn't he? Absolutely. He's a big, big flanker, Peter Dean, and uh, struggles against the really big key position players. Tell you, I'd try Lance Whitnall down back just for a few games, just to get him used to running straight lines and uh, get some fitness and everything else, because I just think he'd be quite good. Now, Swartz is very good in this situation. He has a kick at the goals. He's missed. I think he might have missed that. He might have been better off trying to run around and bend that around a little bit. Let's go down to Andrew Maher, who who's down amongst the thick of the action and the Melbourne cheer down, squad. I'm right down in the middle of the uh, Melbourne cheer squad here, Peter, and I'm joined by a bloke called Peter, and this must be a great moment for oh, you. Fantastic. Um, the boys have played so well today. But they've shown a bit of promise in the first half of the last couple of weeks, but this is the first time they've really put it together. But How tough has it been for you to live through the sort of despair of the season so far? I've been barracking since 1958, so you, you, you learn to be on the end of the 20-goal defeats and you really take the victories when they come and you really enjoy them. But, Supporters are supporters. They come week in, week out. Aaron, put it back to you, Dan. Thanks for that, Aaron Hamill, with the ball going forward from the half-forward flank. Found Murphy. He kicks from 55. It's a long one. Silvani getting the body in front. But a good contest by both Ingerson and Brett Lovett. And it's through for a behind. And the applause comes from the Melbourne cheer squad and the Melbourne members. Phoebe kicking out. I don't think Clarkson will be kicking out again for the rest of the day. <laughs> Glenn Lovett. Got a bit of confidence up the Melbourne boys. Oh. Shepherd by Seacamp. Glenn Lovett, attention from Hamill as he kicks. Oh, Just mid in front. Great hands. I'll tell you what, with the running, the young guys getting a little bit of confidence up, running in a little bit of form. Sean Smith starting to take a grab or two. Well, this is his third week now, I think, so it normally takes three weeks or so to get the big guys back into it. Yeah, for some, Ned. Melbourne supporters just counting the clock down. Look at that desperation there by Glenn Lovett. The ball was over the boundary line. It was out on the fall, but he was still diving after it. Let me add for you, Ned, four. You thought I was going to say something else. Yeah. Eh? Murphy, a huge leap. Steins grabs it. He's wrapped up. Hands and knees by Obst. They're still desperate, the Demons. And there's the siren. Oh, this is brilliant. Let's just watch the reaction here of Hutchie. That is fantastic. That's a brilliant win for Melbourne. This has been a Fox Footy presentation.